We are excited that you are worshiping once again with us at Pulse Online. Our online worship will continue Wednesday nights where we go live before, where one of the pastors, one of the clergy gets to say hi to you, gets to be live, gets to speak your name, gets to say hello. And then of course you can watch this worship service whenever you want. If you're here live with us, please post comments below. Uh, please let us know you're here. And especially if you are new for the first time here, if this is your first time connecting with Cathedral of Hope through Pulse Worship, please go to our website and check in. There'll also be some links below if you're on YouTube or Facebook in the comments where you can register to let us know that you are here. If you are new, we want to make sure that you feel connected to this community. Speaking of connection, I know that we are social distancing, right? But as Reverend Neil, our senior minister says, we are getting closer than ever spiritually. We continue to reach out to God who loves us and reminds ourselves of that during worship. But also we want you to connect. 
So if you are a part of, if you want to be a part of the youth group, the young adult group, if you want to be a part of a family Zoom, please let us know. Reach out to our staff and let us know that you want to be a part of that. Go to our website. On our website, you can sign up for small groups, affinity groups, social groups. We want to make sure that you are connected profoundly so that you know that even though we are distancing ourselves, we are certainly not alone. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to continue the series called Disrupted. Reverend Michael has an amazing word for us tonight. What does it look like when we are distancing? What does it look like when our lives are disrupted for us to continue to see God working in our midst? I don't know about you, but I need that message more than ever now. And also, I want to remind you to give during this whole um, worship experience. There'll be information below to let you know how to give into our community. We give not only because it helps this profound community to give back to the world by loving God, by loving people, but we also give because it's a spiritual discipline. It reminds us that whatever we have, we need to share with everyone. We need to share the abundance of what God has given us to each other and to this world. And we do it through the local church. And so my prayer is that you have found a way to connect. If you go to our, our website, um, you can scroll down and there's an online portal um, for members and for those who are um, engaged in the life of Cathedral of Hope. Sign up for Realm, uh, create auto giving, give us an extra give. You can text to give. All that information will be out for you and available for you to see. And so my prayer is that you will continue to give into the life of this church, your time, talent, and your treasure. We need it more than ever to come together to remind ourselves of the big God that we serve, a God that is bigger than any disruption, a God that is bigger than any difficulty. While we may be in the great pause, God is moving forward and we can move forward as the people of God. So let us continue in this time of worship and I'm going to pray as we continue. God of graciousness and goodness, God who reminds us that while we may be in a time of disruption, we may be disrupted, we reminded God that you are a God that is present with us always, no matter what. You are a God that does powerful and mighty and good things, even in the midst of life's disruptions. And so God, we continue to ask that you would be with us. We continue to ask for your grace amongst us, for your love amongst us. God, help us to continue to know that we are loved and help us to reach out with love to a world in need. May it be so in the name of Jesus. Amen.
sing, God, you're so good. When you're a member of a great church with a great worship team, we can sing, God, you're so good. Amen. My friends, we can sing that song. We can sing those words. And still, there are many people in our community who might be struggling a bit. Some of us are saying, God, you're so good. And yet others feel misunderstood. And instead, they're singing a different tune. Why, God? Why? 
But what tune are you singing? What are you saying? What are you crying out? What are you saying to God this evening? What are you knocking on God's door for today? I ask you, what is it that you're praying for? The Apostle Peter in the book of Acts chapter 12, he was praying. He was praying to be released from prison. The story says that Peter breaks out from prison and he's on the run. And this is where the scripture picks up for us in the book of Acts today. Our scripture is from Acts 12, verses 12 through 16. Peter went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. Peter knocked at the outer entrance, and a servant named Rhoda came to answer the door. And when she recognized Peter's voice, she was overjoyed, and she ran back without opening it. And she said, Peter is at the door. The people responded, you're out of your mind. When she kept insisting that it was so, they said, well, it must be his angel. But Peter, Peter kept on knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. May God add a blessing to the hearing of these words. Amen. My friends, Peter makes it out of prison, and so he's free. And so he decides to go to this friendly house where other followers of Jesus are there, and he knocks. No one opens the door, and so he keeps knocking. Still, no answer. And so what does he do? He keeps on knocking. Now you have to imagine what a vulnerable position Peter is in, right there, standing at the entrance just like this and knocking. Peter is vulnerable. He's standing in anticipation and wondering, is anyone actually home? And if they are home, will they answer his knocks at the door? And if someone does answer, are they going to welcome him or are they going to chase him off the property, maybe with the sword or some other weapon? There are so many ways for this to go wrong for Peter, yet he keeps on knocking. How many of us have prayed once, twice, tens, maybe hundreds of times, and nothing seems to change or happen in our life? We've knocked on God's door, and what happens? We tire, so we stop. But people of God, should we stop or should we be like Peter? Should we keep knocking? And maybe it's not just a small knock. Maybe we need to knock louder. Or maybe we need to find a different way to somehow get that door open. Maybe you need to find a different way to actually get inside. Last week, my partner and I went for a walk in the neighborhood. Well, when we got back to the house, I pulled out my keys and when I tried to unlock the door, the key didn't fit. I took the wrong keys. And so what I do, I started to jiggle the handle, right? My partner's looking at me with that judgmental stare. You know how they do. Shaking the door. I even started knocking on the door, knowing no one was inside, obviously, but hey, you never know. So we tried the front door. We tried the back door. Everything was locked. There was nothing left to do so we had to break into our own home. And so I went around the outside of the house. I started checking all the, the windows around the outside to see if maybe I left one of the windows unlocked. But I gotta tell you, as a brown man living in Oak Cliff, it wasn't a good look, but thankfully the police weren't called on me. Eventually I did find a window that opens up a little bit. And it's one of those windows that, you know, only opens up so far on purpose. So I opened it from the outside, of course, and I, I saw the, the little gap that was there, and I thought, hey, I'm a skinny guy. I can definitely fit through that. Well, my little narrow behind did not fit in that window. Hashtag quarantine 15, it is real. So instead, we had to look for another window. And eventually, I found a window on the back porch unlocked. I gotta tell you, we were pretty excited. And my partner and I eventually made it in the house, but not before a few minutes of banter and arguing over who was to blame for leaving the window unlocked. You left it. No, you left it unlocked. Finally, I said, maybe God left the window unlocked for us. My partner didn't think that was too funny, but it's not supposed to be funny. The point is, we did make it back into our home. And you see, the key didn't do it. The knocking on the door didn't do it. Jiggling the handle, shaking the door, none of that actually got us in. But going in through a window, that's what actually did it. Now, be sure to understand, I am not telling you to find a way to break into people's houses. 
Absolutely not. What I am saying is this. If you've been knocking on God's door for years in the same manner, in the same way, maybe you should try something new. Maybe you should try a different way of knocking, a different way of praying, a different way of entering into a place where God actually is. I'll be honest, I try to verbally pray as regularly as I can. And still, sometimes I get tired. And I used to beat myself up about it, getting tired of verbally speaking to God. Sounds funny, right? Well, sometimes my brain can no longer think of words to say. It happens. And I used to feel shame about it, but then I remembered Jesus being in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. Now imagine that, 40 days of fasting and praying. Do you really think that Jesus verbally prayed for 40 days nonstop, continuously talking out to God? I mean, it's possible, but remember, our tradition says that Jesus was fully divine and fully human. Fully human. And that means like you and me. And so if we get tired of praying sometimes, you don't think Jesus' voice tired a little in the desert? That his voice maybe got a little hoarse? That maybe even Jesus lost his voice in those 40 days? And so did he speak prayers nonstop? Probably not. He didn't talk continuously, yet I'm adamant that he prayed continuously. You see, like Peter, Jesus kept knocking. He kept praying, but he prayed in different ways. For some of us, prayer is a petition that we ask from God, right? We want something. And for others, prayer is about affirming God's truth for our lives right here and right now. And prayer is much more than any verbal exercise. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, Jesus says, Ask and you shall receive, knock and the door will be answered. It's not only about an ask, a verbal ask, it's an ask that we initiate with our lives and actions. Prayer is much more than a verbal thing. Prayer actually points to communing with God. And you don't have to speak in a certain way to be in communion with God. Richard War says, Prayer is about a conscious, loving union with God. I believe that prayer is a state of consciousness. It's a way of being. You do it by living your life in communion with God so that every action you take is seen as a prayer of thanks to God. Admiring creation, taking walks, making phone calls, even worshiping online like you all are right now. These can all be acts of prayer and a life of prayer, a spiritual life that keeps knocking at the door, that keeps finding a way to enter into God's presence and blessing. I believe that is truly a way of being in our world. In this life of prayer and communion, it shouldn't be only for you, but also for others. We should be the example. In his book, Lead Like Jesus, Ken Blanchard says that leaders should pray for other people first before they pray for their own needs. And so this week, I wonder what you could do to find a new way to pray or intercede on someone else's behalf. Maybe pick someone on your contact list, your friends list, maybe on your Facebook or your social media platform of choice. But ask people, how can you pray for them? It doesn't have to be in public, it can be a private message, but however you choose to reach out to them, just do it. Do it and pray for them and pray for them throughout the next week and spend some time being mindful of them. You see, you need not necessarily be mindful of folks with mere words. You can simply envision them in your mind and envision that as they knock on the doors of heaven for whatever their need might be, that God is showering upon them blessings, blessings of comfort and blessings of peace, blessings of wholeness and blessings of health. Affirm God's presence and God's goodness in their lives, not only with mere words, but also with vision. You can also do it with your actions. You might consider giving a love offering to someone in need this week. Someone who God has put upon your heart that you might help this week. Your gifts to others are another form of prayer. In fact, your gifts and your actions might be more than someone's prayer. They actually might be the answer to someone's prayer. My friends, I'll be honest. 
with COVID-19, our lives have been disrupted. And I wish we could turn back the clock. Unfortunately, we can't undo the past, but we can still have hope for the future. What we are going through now really is only temporary. You see, in our lives, we have to get through the temporary in order to fully tap into that which is eternal. God's love, eternal. God's presence, eternal. God's goodness, these things are eternal. Back in our story in Acts, when Peter is freed uh, from prison, the story says that at the time, Peter didn't know if this was a dream, if this was a vision, if this was really happening at all. It turns out it did happen. His dream turned into a reality. And my friends, I encourage you, be like Peter. Keep knocking and keep praying and find different ways to do it. And watch God help make your vision actually become a reality. Be blessed. Amen. So Jesus be the center of this church. Jesus be the center of our church And every knee shall bow And every tongue shall confess you Jesus, Jesus Just sing Jesus, Jesus Reclaim the name
Well, I sincerely hope that you've enjoyed worship again here at Cathedral of Hope at Pulse on Wednesday night. A powerful message. Reverend Michael, thank you for sharing with us and reminding us about who's knocking and for Voices of Hope, always bringing to life extravagant music that just brings a breath of fresh air to our souls and to our spirit. A wonderful Wednesday pick me up gathered for worship. So thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Remember to check out uh, our Facebook page, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube and uh, keep coming back. Uh, we want to encourage you in this time of COVID-19 coronavirus. We want to be there for you. We want to pray for you. We want to celebrate you. And uh, so join us every Wednesday and every Sunday, 7.15 on Wednesdays and on Sundays at uh, 11 o'clock in English and one o'clock in Spanish. God bless you. Keep the faith as we join together for worship. Amen. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness. You give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Ooh. Come on, voices, let's sing it together. You give light, you are love, you bring light to the darkness. You give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Oh, no.
disruption 